we have our relationship between position and velocity, and we can write it in full detail as saying x final equals x initial plus, and here we're going to use our, our calculus idea of the area under the curve, our velocity versus the time interval. Okay, So this is adding up all the little steps in time um, as if we're adding up the little rectangles under a curve, but now velocity could be changing in, in complex ways. Okay, We also know that velocity is equal to whatever it started with plus acceleration times our time period. Okay, uh, um, and I'm going to put a, a delta t here. Okay, so this is delta v equals acceleration times delta t. Now we could have actually written this as an integral with a dt, but we're going to focus in this course only on cases where the acceleration is zero, or it's constant, either zero or constant non-zero value. We could do an integral and have the case where the acceleration is changing, um, but that just adds a level of complexity which is unnecessary to understand the basics. Further, there are so many cases that are interesting and applicable in everyday life where the acceleration is constant, and we're going to see those um, throughout this course. And so this is a sufficient way, but we do need to remember that what we're about to derive are, uh, assumes the acceleration is constant, so we can write it out not as a derivative or, or an integral in this case, but just as a constant value times this time period. Okay, um, so in doing, what we want to do is now um, take this and plug it into here. This of itself is a very useful equation, and in fact, the first of what we call our kinematic equations for constant acceleration. It just relates the final velocity to the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time, the, uh, the change in time. And often we can choose our t initial time to be zero, such that this just becomes time. Okay. Now our question is, how do we get it into here? Even though the acceleration is constant, that means the velocity doesn't nece isn't necessarily constant. If the acceleration is non-zero, the velocity is changing in time, and so we have to consider it in its integral form. So our question is, well, how do we find the full equation for position? Well, we could plug this into this velocity function, where this velocity is now whatever final velocity at some time. So this can be rewritten as v is some variable now is equal to v initial plus acceleration times and then here's just our variable t so this time this time period assuming our, our initial um, uh, time is zero okay we could plug that into here and we get x initial plus integral of a constant plus acceleration times time we'll put that around parentheses times our step here. Okay. Now, just as a review, how do you integrate these? Well, first of all, it's in two parts. So we can treat it as two integrals. We get an integral of this constant times the, the time step plus the acceleration. We have this next term, the acceleration times time times the dt. Okay. Just like in derivatives, constants aren't, aren't, aren't acted on, so we can pull those out. So we have xi plus vi, integral of just dt, plus a, and the integral of t dt. Okay? Well, the integral over dt from some initial time to some final time is just the change in total time. So that becomes x initial plus v initial, I'm going to put delta t there, plus a. All right, now the integral of time, with respect to time, is the reverse of a derivative. So I always like to do my integrals by saying the derivative of what would give me time to the first power. Well, I know that's going to be time um, to the second power. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in my delta t, because it's going to be the, the total time. It's going to be time to the second power, but if I take the derivative of that, the 2 would have come down, and I'd have a 2a delta t, which I don't have a 2, which means I must have had a half 
out front to cancel that additional 2. So again, to check, the 2 comes down, cancels this 2, and I have a t to the first power. So, so I end up with this um, exact what, what I had in the integral. This is now my second kinematic equation. And this one half you know, is the only real effect that came from the complexity of the derivative or the calculus nature or the fact that velocity could be changing in time and if there is an acceleration it means velocity is changing in time so I have to use this this integral um, but the result is um, uh, pretty straightforward and easy to use so we have this relationship here and we have this relationship now there's actually a third one technically those are the only two but there's a third one we like to group with our kinematic equations just because in real life it is very common that we don't know a lot about the time. We can, let's say a car is driving, we see where it's at at one spot, we see where it's at at another spot, um, and we, we can see that it you know, was moving and then stopped moving, all that stuff, but we don't know much about time. And so basically, if you take this equation and solve this for time, plug it in, sorry, this one, solve it for your time interval, plug it in here, you eliminate the time and now I have an equation that just has position, velocity, and acceleration. And after simplification, so taking these two and simplifying it, you end up with another equation that relates the square of the velocities with the acceleration and the displacement. Okay. This is what we call our third kinematic equation. Again, I like to emphasize it's nothing new. It's just a mathematical manipulation. These two are based off of true physics principles. This one is the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is a change in velocity over a change in time. This one is defined as a change. In, it's a definition of velocity, a change in position over a change in time. Only we have to be more careful when the velocity itself is changing, giving us this.